The construction of Roker Pier and its lonely lighthouse began in 1885, finally stretching out to shelter visiting vessels in 1903. For well over 100 years, this Wearside landmark has protected the river and been battered by the elements. The brainchild of Sunderland engineer Henry Hay Wake, on its completion, it was hailed as an engineering marvel and one that has stood the test of time, protecting the weir shipping and standing guard against all that nature has thrown at it over the last century. The pier was built to Henry Hay Wake's ingenious design, using pre-molded granite-faced concrete blocks, each weighing 45 tonnes, that were set in place by a vast crane called Goliath. Section by section the pier grew to be finally topped off by the red and white lighthouse that originally housed a gas lantern delivering 45,000 candle power that could be seen 15 miles out to sea. The gas delivered through pipes from the mainland. In 2013 a regeneration program began. The city council are now actually uh, putting in 1.35 million to restore not just this area but all of the seafront but of course it is a working lighthouse and it has to be kept. Our coast is a big uh, asset to the city. We, you know, when you look along this coast, it's natural, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. And of course the working lights out has to be there, but it also enhances this area. And I think this is, for me, this is one of the best parts of the coast. A little known secret is that under the pier, running all the way to the lighthouse, is a tunnel. A tunnel that carries the now disused gas pipes and was a means to the light for the keeper in bad weather. This same tunnel is still occasionally used today to rescue anyone stranded during storms. So far, work has taken place on the upper part of the lighthouse with plans for the tunnel. If you look at the top of the lighthouse, there's a new coupling on the top and all the upstairs and that has, uh, has had to be refurbished, obviously for the shipping and uh, what shipping we get around this area. Um, the tunnel hasn't changed very much, obviously, it's been cleaned up a bit, I believe, and uh, our intention, hopefully for the future, is if we can get the funding, is to actually open it up to the public and have tours through there, but uh, I believe it's single file. Uh, you, can, you can just form a single file and you sort of don't get much chat, you're just following each other along the tunnel. To mark the next stage of the regeneration plan, the council invited descendants of the architect, Henry Hay Wake, to inspect his monumental legacy and to venture into the tunnel. I think it's absolutely fabulous that people are taking an interest in the pier after all this time and a lot of work's going to be done to get it up and running again for other people to see. Really, really excited about seeing what it's like down under the tunnel. I understand that my great-grandfather was well, he was a genius, really. I don't know where it came from, because we certainly haven't got it. <laughs> Henry Hay Wake buried his roots deep in the area and was very much part of Wearside's innovative and industrial circle. Henry was born in Sunderland. He married Isabella Thompson, who was part of the Thompson shipbuilding dynasty. Uh, he had, I don't know how many children, eight, I believe. Not all of them survived. And my grandmother, Enid Hay Wake, was his youngest daughter. Um, my mum was her daughter, and I'm... Um, his great granddaughter. As time has passed, Henry's family has spanned the globe, and the city council were delighted to not only be joined by Marilyn, who still lives locally, but also by Carmen Higgs and her father Geoffrey, both born in Zimbabwe but now living in Australia. My grandfather Mervyn is, is, uh, was Henry's son. So Henry's my, his great grandfather, my great great grandfather. It's, it's an emotional link that um, I've never we've never been to Sunderland before. And um, my mum used to talk about the pier and we had an etching of it on the wall and to come over the hill and just see it is, was quite something. We both enjoy history very much um, and yeah. It's, it's nice to rub in family dinners on the other side of the <laughs> <laughs> As a lonely sentinel, the Roker Lighthouse continues to protect the river. Henry Hay Wake's legacy is as important a landmark today as it was back in 1903.